All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back and the used sailboat market is going down faster than the Titanic. Now, if you want to get on the water sooner than later and you've been planning to buy yourself a new to you fancy dancy used sailboat, you need to be paying attention to this giant market crash that is coming. Now, prices have been absolutely tanking for about the last six months. So not only do you need to be paying attention to these price drops that are happening, you also need to learn how to actually shop for a sailboat. I get a lot of emails, consulting members, things like that. They've drove all over town because these clown face potato for brain brokers looking at dumpster vessels that would never work in the first place anyway. So today I'm going to show you exactly what your thought process should be throughout the entire sailboat shopping experience so that you stop wasting so much of your time. Your time is the most valuable asset that you have. Stop wasting it on trash can vessels that people are recommending on random forums or people that are just spouting out nonsense information they heard somewhere from people that don't have any kind of saving experience especially not the type of sailing that you're looking to do. So here we are. We're over on the wonderful world of yachts. Go up here to boats. Boom. Sailboats. Definitely want to be looking at sailboats, not power boats. Our price, just for the video, we're going to do 100 grand. Boom. Got my $100,000 in there. It's going to go price low to high. Whatever your budget is, put your budget in. Easy cheesy, lemon breezy. Now we're cruising right along. Let's say I'm looking for a 35 to 40 footer to cruise around in the Caribbean. I need to start looking at options, right? So right off the bat, I've got a Catalina 350. Now a lot of people will recommend this boat, and it's usually from people that don't actually sail full time. You know how I know that? Because I sail full time, tens of thousands of nautical miles every single year, and I know the Catalina 350 is an absolute dumpster of a vessel, and here is why. So we're going to scroll right through the photos. Look at how small this cockpit is, right? If I'm going to be coastal cruising, sailing the Caribbean, going to be in warm climates, where am I going to be? Be outside all the time. Where do I need room? Right out here, because this is where I'm going to spend most of my time. And look at how jammed this cockpit is. Talk about uncomfortable misery ahead. Boom. We got some huge dinghy davits off the back. Fantastic. Let me just wipe out 180 degrees of my view when I'm sailing. Look at this nonsensical trash can of a vessel. Look at this. Absolute train wreck. It does have an in-mass further, so that's a plus. But we're cruising right along. Okay. Your basic 35-foot interior. They did some cool things. The captain's chairs are okay. This table needs to go. It actually folds, but you need to get an insert there to make it into a couch. Pretty steep stairway, little L-shaped galley. Nothing really happening here. This little angle thing, it's gonna drive you nuts. Trust me, you're gonna be at sea. You're gonna trip over that thing all the time. Ask me how I know. Oh, cause I'm always sailing. Little tiny master suite. That's exactly what I'd expect from a 35 footer. It's half ass walk around. Can you step up to do it? Nope, not gonna work out. Then we got this. I can smack my face right here as I walk into the aft cabin every single time. Yeehaw, lucky me. Little tiny separate stand-up shower. Okay, not the end of the world. What are we going to do now? Looking at this boat, let's say you've gotten romantically involved with this boat. You don't even own the damn thing, and you're already planning your delusional future by just looking at some pictures of a boat. How silly can you possibly be? Stop doing that. Instantly take this boat, pop it over to Sailboat Data. Boom. I'm over here on Sailboat Data. All I did was Google Catalina 350 Sailboat Data. Gives me the layout. Two cabin. Fantastic. I scroll right down here. This is what I'm looking for. This is where I'm jamming. This is where I'm hanging out. I got a 13 foot beam. Not great. Not terrible. 31.27 length of the waterline. 35.2.42 length overall. So this is my livable space on board. Your length of the waterline. This is what I'm going to be charged in marinas. Now, I go back to the boat listing. Okay. Gonna go ahead and take another look at sailboat data. Got my generalization here. Boom, back over to Yacht World, okay? Maybe that one's on my list. Maybe it's not, but here I am. So I got a Catalina 350. I'm scrolling, I'm cruising, I'm shaking. We're not buying boats from the 90s, especially not for 100K. Why is that, Chris? Because everything on a sailboat has a lifespan, and if it's from the 90s, it's gonna need a major refit. I don't care what they've done to it. You gotta do standing rigging, sails, check the engine hours, how much anchor chain, what anchor, does it have a dinghy, an outboard, what size outboard, have an EPIRB, AIS, what, you know, all those things. Anyway, so we're cruising, cruising right along here. Boom, I got a Genoa Sun Odyssey 39DS, fancy dancy, hybrid deck salon. We're loading the page. It's trying to load. There it is. 
Now we've got our Juno 39 Dexalon, also a two cabin, just like the Catalina. We've got a wet head right over here, large master berth up front, boom. Now look at this compared to the Catalina interior. See how much more light this has? Let's go over to the Catalina. Let's get some interior photos here. We can kind of compare firsthand, maybe tomorrow, when I get some photos of the interior. Brokers love this. Let's take a picture of the gosh darn outside. 97, there we go. All right, so I've got this cave dwelling looking basement monstrosity of an interior right here. Yeehaw, look at me go. Wow, I can live in a cave or I could live in a nice lighted outdoor oceanfront condo. Hmm, what am I gonna do? So far to me, this looks better. Scrolling, very nice L-shaped galley, tons of light, nice forward master. This one's got some more headroom. I'm still gonna probably smack my face back there, but not as much as on the Catalina. Now I've got teak decks. When you're looking at boats, stop it with the I'm romantic and I like wood nonsense. It's too much upkeep. That's the biggest downfall of this particular boat is all of this darn teak. So we're cruising. I've also got my dual helms on the vessel. That means larger outdoor living space. Where's that going to benefit me, Chris? In the damn Caribbean where you said you wanted to sail, right? Yes. So now I've got a large outdoor living area, dual helms, better, better visibility when I'm sailing. Look at all this interior light. Now, I don't care which brand you like, Catalina, there's this trash can of an interior, or there's this. What? Come on, stop it. When you're looking at boats, look at what price range you're at and compare. <laughs> Hello? I'm absolutely going with a boat that is four years newer, is a hybrid deck salon, has a dual helm on the boat, a larger outdoor living space, a better interior. Like, this is a no brainer right here back over to yacht world cruising shaking we're baking again currently looking 35 to 40 foot 100k ish range see what i've got going on now i have an oceanus 30.1 too small it's a lake sailor okay that's all that this is is the lake sailor it's too light we got a elaine alon impression 384 however you want to pronounce it now I have an okay size cockpit, but I've gone down to a single helm. You have to consider that. Again, we're in the same price range here. I have a swim platform. It's actually a sugar scoop on this one. So the other ones are comparable there. Now, we're cruising right along. Look at this. Yeehaw. We're moving. Look at this. I put a bed up here. Ooh, it's even got cutouts for the little windows. Yeehaw. Look at you go. Congratulations. Now, not terrible, right? Not horrible, but not as awesome looking as this now that's going to be a personal preference you would want to go on both of these models they don't have to be this specific boat located here just the model is all you have to look at double sinks whoever invented double sinks should be taken on the freeway and dropped off in rush hour uh double sinks are atrocious all right we're cruising we're shaking you know nothing about this looks great to me so far doesn't look terrible but not looking awesome. I don't have much room. Right when I step through these doors, I got no room before I run into the foot of that bed. I don't like that. I like to be able to actually close my door without feeling like I just did an Olympic gymnastic feat there. So, cruising, got some stock photos. Yeehaw, look at us go. We got a 110 Genoa. Where are we going, ladies and gentlemen? We're going to sailboat data. And just like magic, a quick Google, bam, I'm on sailboat data. Now, this one, for some stupid reason, comes in a three cabin. No thank you. And then look at the forward master. It's got this angled bed. Again, personal preference, whatever you like. This is what really matters. Now, I have a 12.83 foot beam, 36.91. So 37 length waterline, only 38 length overall. There's only a one foot difference there. As far as livable space, this is the largest of the last ones that we've just looked at. It's far larger than our Catalina 350 at 31.27. And it's very, very close to our Genoa. It's actually larger than the Genoa as far as your livable space on board. 36.92, Genoa's got 35.16. So not the end of the world difference there. So this is gonna be the largest as far as interior space goes on paper. But when it comes to sailboats, you really need to get on them firsthand so you can see how comfortable it is and how user-friendly that they are. 
Now, for me personally, I know all of the benefits of a deck salon. These are a hybrid deck salon, a raised coach roof, more light gets in. This one's got the dual helms. Again, I'm gonna be sailing in the Caribbean, warm waters, tropical locations. I'm sitting right here, sipping a Mai Tai, anchored right off some white sandy beach and palm trees. So for me, this one's absolutely winner, winner, chicken dinner, 39 DS. If this is my budget, 100K, coastal cruiser, island hopper, bingo. So far, we got 39 DS. Now, we're going to get some pop-ups from this trash can nonsense. Now, you might say to yourself, oh my gosh, but Chris, if I go just a few years older, I can get myself a Beneteau Oceanus 461. Okay, stop the madness. We're going straight to sailboat data. Just like magic, here we are. Comes in a wide variety of layouts. Bam, I have 39 0.37 length at the waterline and a 14 foot beam so although you think it's a 47 foot vessel it's not you're gonna pay for 47 feet and a boat slip for sure your livable space is still under 40 and if we go back and we start comparing it it's not that far off from the 39 ds as far as length at the waterline not horribly far off from the elan either so when you're doing that what you're doing is you're just getting yourself a much, much older vessel that is barely larger because the newer vessels have more livable space on the smaller boats. So you have to keep that in mind. The older the vessel you get, the smaller it really is in comparison to its model. This isn't a 46 foot vessel. This is a 39 footer and you've gone all the way to 1996. That's insane. That's 30 years old. Stop it. Stop the madness. Back to Yacht World. Stop doing that. This isn't going to work. You're just going to bite into a whole bunch of cost refitting and outfitting the vessel. Trust me. Same thing here. You want to get as new as possible. Pay very, very close attention to this length at the waterline versus your length overall numbers, right? You want to keep this as close as you possibly can. Stop it with the six, seven, eight foot differences. It's wasted space and you're just going to spend more money in slips and marinas. Now, I already know what you're doing. You're sitting at home with a cup of, yeah, Chris, I'm never going to be in a marina. I'm not social. I don't want to be around people. You're crying in the corner right now with some nonsensical bullshit is what you're doing. The reality is you're going to wind up in marinas. Every time you need boat work, guess where you're going? You're going to the damn marina. So stop thinking you're Tom Hanks and Castaway, and you're just going to live some deserted island life. That's not true. Every time you check into a country, you're going to be around a whole bunch of people. You're going to have to get boat slips in marinas anytime you need work done. You're always going to have to pull up, get fuel, things like that. So stop thinking you're going to be out there in the middle of nowhere and your boat size doesn't matter. It absolutely does matter and your cost will be dramatically increased the larger the vessel you go. There are breaking points on vessel. When you go from 40 and under to 40 and above, you generally got to pay more for a boat slip for the 40 foot and above slips. When you go above 50, it increases even more again. So we're cruising. We're staying away from old vessels. Now we got a Bavaria 46. Bavaria's not a giant fan of Bavaria's. Here is why. Now, here we are. We're taking a gander at the Bavaria. Okay. <laughs> again, we have a almost seven foot discrepancy in your length of the waterline versus your length overall. I'm not a fan. Again, this is a 40 foot boat disguised as a 46 footer. It's not a 46 footer. Knock it off. Stop trying to convince your significant other that the boat's much, much bigger. It is not. It has a bunch of wood. Yes, it's got the dual helms, this lame sugar scoop right there. I don't like the older Bavarias at all. They, this boat is an absolute dumpster of a boat. Just stop it. Look at that teak. It's just going to be tons of work. Chain plates or standing rigging looks like trash. Photos look like trash. Everything about this boat looks like shit. So we're not going to waste our time. Stop trying to sell yourself on boats that make no damn sense. Boom. I got another hybrid Dexalon right here. As you know, 40 DS. What am I going to do? Instantly go into sailboat data. Here we are. Oh my gosh, I'm like a magician. Boom. The Juno 40DS is a POS. It's got 33 feet 
length at the waterline, 40 over of all. Again, we're at that seven foot discrepancy with the 13 foot beam. So if I go back to the 39 DS, look, my 39 DS, it's bigger than the 40 DS by a large margin. You have to understand what it is you're actually looking at. Stop paying attention to model numbers, okay? Instantly go to sailboat data, check out your length of waterline versus length overall, because you're probably in your head going, oh my gosh, Chris, I can jump up to the 40 DS and get a bigger boat instead of the 39 DS. No, George, you can't. The 40 DS is quite a bit smaller than the 39 DS. So what are we gonna do? We instantly pass. This is also a single helm. Absolutely not. We're passing, we're done. We're all done with the 40 DS. Not gonna work. Don't need to convince myself that it's going to work. So as we continue down the rabbit hole, also known as sailboat shopping, it just gets more tricky. So again, we've got another Bavaria. I don't have to look. I already know there's a large discrepancy. I don't like Bavarias myself. Maybe that you do. Again, you've got to get the boat that works for you, not for me. This is stupid. You got a double step sugar scoop. No bueno. You're going to trip right there. Inevitably single helm, small cockpit, large discrepancy, length waterline versus length overall. Very, very small vessel, useless forward V berth. Yeehaw, we're, we're done there. Okay, we're not buying boats from 1976. Knock it off. Bruce Roberts, no can do me amigo. Here's why we don't do Bruce Roberts. It has a 32 foot length waterline, 43.24 overall. We've got over a 10 foot discrepancy. Stop it. You don't need to look at stupid boats like this. There's no reason to. The Juno 39DS is going to be much, much larger and save you a ton of money in the long run when it comes to running costs on your boat. You have to really keep that in mind when it comes to buying yourself a new to you fancy dancy used sailboat. You're running costs over time. You should be looking at running costs on a five year span. Now throughout that five years, you're gonna wind up in marinas numerous times. I know you think you're Tom Hanks, you're not. You're gonna wind up in marinas and you need to pay attention to the cost of those marinas, especially if you're gonna be sailing in the Caribbean because a lot of places in the Caribbean are wildly expensive when it comes time to get boat work and slips for getting the boat work done. Stop thinking you got yourself a larger vessel and went up to a 43 footer when it's really a 32 footer, you dingleberry. Back to sailboat data we are. Boom, we got a 1980s. Stop the madness, J-Boat's Eraser. Again, the 411, 2001, we're over that 20 year mark, in my opinion, it's too old. And what do we instantly do? We go straight to sailboat data. And here we are, we're on sailboat data, yeehaw. 36.92, 41 length overall, 13 foot beam. What does that sound a lot like? It sounds a lot like the Sun Odyssey 39DS. This has 35 length overall, but you come in under 40 foot over that five year lifespan of you having the sailboat, it's gonna save you a ton of money when it comes to marinas. Now this boat's not any bigger, 36.92 compared to the 39DS at 35.16, relatively the same, but the DS has, again, the dual helms. It's the hybrid deck salon. The 411, it's a single helm vessel. Come on, Yacht World, load the page, please. There we go. So our 411, the single helm vessel, small cockpit, cluttered nonsensical trash can of a boat. Look at this. This boat looks like absolute shit. So you, when you start looking at boats like this, you don't need to go any further, right? You could just stop right now. You don't need to keep going. This boat is taken care of like dog shit. Look at it. It's a cluttered goddamn mess sitting in some dry dock somewhere, rotting its life away. And this guy is trying to convince you that it's worth $100,000 of your hard earned money. Guess what, John? It's not. Yeah, this guy just stop, stop doing this stuff to yourself. You don't need to waste your time anymore. You keep on cruising. Here we go. We're moving. We're shaking. We're baking. We're cruising. We're bruising. Easy cheesy lemon breezy. The Hans 355. You go up to a newer boat, but this is a relatively small vessel. It's not a 35 footer. Right here on sailboat data, the Hans 355. 31 foot boat. Stop it. <laughs> we're not we're not going for that. People always hey, I'm like people call me up for consulting all the time. I'm like, fantastic. What size vessel are you looking for? I'm thinking a, a 35 footer. That doesn't mean anything. I need to know what length of the waterline do you want? That's what I need to know because 35 footers are all wildly different. That 35 footer we just saw, it's a 31 footer. Why don't you just go buy yourself a dinghy and call it a day? 
Uh, not that it's a bad boat, but you're not getting the most usable space possible for your money. And I want to make sure you get the best deal out there. So again, when you're cruising around Yacht World, understand a 40 footer doesn't mean 40 foot. A 46 footer doesn't mean 46. Instantly go to sailboat data, pull up your length of the waterline versus length overall, and start to understand what is actually going to make the most sense for you. Now, I'm going to take things one step further for you today. So here I am. I'm on my spreadsheet. This is going to be wildly helpful in your future sailboat shopping endeavors. This is available directly on my website, chasinglatitudes.com. Click on consulting. Scroll down. It's right here. It comes with my new ebook. The sailboat spreadsheet is on page three of my ebook. Now, what is this going to do for you? So right here, I've got my Genoa 39DS. It's listed for 100K. I've got the vessel hyperlinked right on my spreadsheet. It's a 2007. Has a length overall of 38.92, a length of the waterline of 35.16, the beam, the cabins, the fuel, and the water. Now I can see instantly because I've put this on my spreadsheet, I only have 34 gallons of water. Any type of long distance cruising, I'm going to have to install a water maker or another water tank on my vessel. Now, when I scroll down to number two, this is where things get really, really important. So I've got sails, standing rigging, anchors, running rigging, bottom job, dinghy. How many hours on the engine? Does it have a life raft? How much chain? And does it have an e -perb? So now I have to go back to my sailboat listing right here. And then from here, I got to scroll down and try to figure out anything. And what I'm going to find out is that the broker has told me absolutely nothing because they never do. So I've got some basic things right here, but nothing that's telling me anything other than basic stock information here. Um, so I don't see any upgrades at all. Nothing doesn't tell me anything. So you might think this has a lot, but now what you have to do is you have to call the broker before you ever send me a boat listing or before you ever even consider any boat for sale. You need to instantly call the broker up so that you can fill out this information. Now, we don't know that information. Let's say I need to pick myself up a new mainsail because the mainsail is original and it needs to be replaced. Well, I know I'm out about four grand. Let's say the Genoa has been replaced. So now I've got my sails. Got to grab a new sail. It's four grand. The vessel is a 2007. So we're coming up on that 15, 20 year range in your standing rigging. What does that mean? I'm going to have to start to replace that sooner than later, most likely. I can almost guarantee that that is original standing rigging. So not stellar. Let's say that I have to replace the standing rigging. Now, I know just from personal experience, it's going to run me about 5,500 bucks on this particular model. Let's say our anchors are good. My running rigging is good. Let's say it's had a recent bottom job, but doesn't have a dinghy and I have to get myself a dinghy and an outboard. Well, I got 5k in a dinghy and an outboard right there. Let's say it doesn't have a life raft and I want to do some long distance cruising. I got to get myself a life raft. I got to spend three grand on a life raft. Boom. Doesn't have an e -perv either. And I want to do those long distance cruises. Now my e -perv is going to run me about a thousand dollars. So pretty simple stuff. A new mainsail, some standing rigging, a dinghy, life raft, e -perv. No big deal. All basic stuff. Now, I know that I'm going to have to add a water maker because it doesn't have hardly any water. Let's say it does have a generator. So I'm going to add myself a water maker there. Let's say it's got all this other stuff. No worries. Now, I've got my state tax, import tax, registration, airfare to get there, lodging, hiring a captain, insurance. My insurance is going to run me about four grand for the first year for a vessel of this size. Generally speaking, going to be somewhere in that range. Now, down here at the bottom of my spreadsheet, look. It's automatically added it all up for you. That's not a $100,000 Juno 39DS. That is a $128,000 39DS. That's why this spreadsheet is so vitally, vitally important that you pick up on my website. ChasingLatitudes.com, go buy it. It'll save you a ton of money. I now know this 39DS, that's not a $100,000 vessel. It's a $130,000 vessel. So now what do I have to do? Well... Now I hop right back over to Yacht World. Now I know that, as you know, it's not a hundred grand. It's 130 grand. So now what am I doing? I'm going to put $130,000 as my budget minimum. Boom. Not 13,000. We need 130,000. All right, let's roll. Price low to high. Boom. Now what am I working with? Okay. Got a Juno Sun Odyssey 43, 2003, 130K. 
90s boat, not doing that. Okay, 130k. Bavaria 37. It's in Taiwan, but hypothetically, much, much newer model. CNCs are I hate those boats. Uh, we're kind of looking here. 130k. What else is on the market? Got some Bavarias. I don't like Bavarias, but we do need to do our due diligence. We need to take a look at all these boats that are the $130,000 range. Got a 420 Passage right there. We got a 43 DS. Let's take a gander at this, but what do we do first? Right to sailboat data. So here I am, sailboat data. Boom, I'm gonna scroll down. Look at, oh my gosh. 13.75, 37.5. So I do gain some room in my livable space because my beam goes up quite a bit. My length of waterline doesn't go up a ton, but it goes up a little bit. So I also have to understand that with this length overall, it's gonna increase my running costs. So if I was looking at this and I really considered it, I would have to go and get on this model and the 39DS. They are close enough to where it's going to be a personal preference between the two. And this one would of course have to be fully outfitted to where we didn't have to do anything in order for this to make more sense than the other one. But back over to Yacht World, we're gonna try to find a little bit better comparison here. Now we got a 434 impression. So I go up quite a bit in size with this boat. So. It's got the dual helm, all the things we've known and come to love, blah, blah, blah. But we're going right to sailboat data. Here I am taking a gander at the boat. Comes in a bunch of layouts. So again, I haven't gone up much here. Got 37.57. Remember, my Genoa, 35.16. So I haven't gone up a ton. I have gone up some and I've got my beam up. But my length overall, my running cost has increased dramatically because I've broken that 40 foot mark. So if I go back a little bit here, trying to find something comparable, apples to apples, oranges to oranges, all those good things. Let's see, got a Bavaria 37 cruiser. I don't like Bavarias at all. We go back to that cluttered small cockpit. This doesn't look terrible. That looks good. Now this is a much newer boat, which is why it looks so much better on the interior. Um, Let's see here, cruising right along. This guy's taking interior photos to, to look how small this is. This is gonna suck, right? But we can go right to sailboat data and try to compare. Now here we are, looking at the Bavaria 37. Look, 31 foot length of waterline. That's instantly X top of our list. It's not a 37 footer, it's a gosh darn 30 footer. This is what I mean. You've got to understand what you're actually looking at and stop paying attention to model numbers. Pull up sailboat data, look at the actual size. Now the Cyclades is huge. So you can get into the Cyclades for 130K. It's in Antigua, but your running costs have increased dramatically. Your size has gone up quite a big amount, but also your running cost. So you could technically get a 50 footer for the same price as your 39 deck salon but again you'd have to put that on the spreadsheet and you, then you have to work into all the things that it needs does it need how much of this stuff does it need to actually get your realistic cost of the vessel you can't just think it's 130k and there's a little bit of work to do if you look at this spreadsheet you'd think this was a little bit of work too i just got to grab a mainsail redo the standing rigging get myself a dinghy a life raft an eperb no big deal i'd have to do that most of that stuff anyway right now you're romanticizing a boat you don't own and you're talking yourself into spending money you don't need to spend so that Genoa 39 ds it's not 100k it's 130k i can assure you the cyclades is going to be similar it's not going to be 130k it's going to be 150 or 160 depending on what they have done so we're going to go ahead and scroll down. Other details. Look, this is all copy and pasted. Yeehaw. Okay. So you didn't tell me anything. Thank you. As usual, are you seeing a pattern here? Brokers don't tell you anything. So what do you have to do? Instantly call the broker. Grab my spreadsheet. Start filling out the stuff that you need on the spreadsheet so you can get a realistic idea of the cost of the vessel that you actually want to buy. That will make sailboat shopping much, much easier you're not going to have many options. I don't care what kind of money you have. Once you start to think about this thing in black and white and be realistic about it, you're only going to have maybe two or three models that are actually going to work for you and your spouse and whatever kind of saying it is that you want to do. The quicker you narrow down your boat search to a few models, the better it's going to be for you. Now, for the purpose of this video, in my opinion, the 39DS, it's the best one at 100K. I don't know if it needs all this stuff because the guy didn't tell me anything. 
I still have to call him. So I can keep on looking for the 130k range, assuming it needed those things, but then I'm going to get up into larger running costs, trying to live my life on a budget, I'm trying to be frugal and see as much as I can and travel as much as I can. So I want my running cost on my boat to be as low as possible. The Ocean S40 is a phenomenal boat, used to own it, love them, they came down a lot in price. This is actually the same boat listed twice, yeehaw, you're a genius broker. So not much on the market for that 100 budget, something nice to cruise the islands. You're looking at like a 39 DS right now. There are some other models, but once you break it down in the spreadsheet, trust me, they're not going to make any sense. I'm here to tell you, I've got too much experience. I know for certain most of these are not going to make any sense. Maybe you're going to wind up with two models, possibly three at the maximum. If you're looking for the 35 to 40 foot island hopper and your budget's 100K. Now don't forget, just because this boat says 130,000 US, it doesn't mean anything. People are always negotiable. Also, stop looking at this. Oh my gosh, it's already got an arch in solar. This doesn't cost anything. These solar panels aren't worth anything. This little arch wasn't very much money. You're better off just doing that yourself. Get some panels that fit your personal needs. Get an arch that fits your needs if that's what you want to do. Now, I love the Oceanus 40 across the Atlantic on this make and model. Big, big fan if you get it in the two cabin version. It may be worth jumping up to. In my humble opinion, you do break that 40 foot length overall mark. Going to pay a little bit more in slips. Um, they're nice boats, though, and they'll get you wherever it is that you want to go. So hopefully that helps you a little bit with your boat shopping. And then next up, we need to discuss the actual cost of sailboat living full-time on a sailboat and I'll cover that in tomorrow's video. If you do need help getting on the water sooner than later, you can head on over to our website at chasinglatitudes.com. Now I do offer full consulting over here. Now there's a few different routes that you can go. Let's say that you're interested in a particular boat and you really want me to go in depth with you and take a look at it. You can get a one-on-one, -on -one, one-time consult. It's on sale right now. It's only $100. That gives you lifetime access to my private members area with hundreds of other members all looking to get on the water sooner than later. We will have a live one-on-one -on -one conversation. We'll discuss the boat you might be interested in. Uh, in depth or we can go over several boats. Whatever it is you need, you can grab the one-time consult. Now, if you're in the process of buying and you kind of still got to narrow some things down, maybe you've had a previous survey that didn't work out, you're trying to determine like offer prices, things like that, you can grab a consulting package. Now, this will be three different consults, so we can go over multiple boats, we can touch back and forth, lifetime access to the members area, all of those good things. This is currently on sale. It's only $375. And then... If you're starting your whole journey, you don't know where to start, you need help the entire process, you can get the 24 seven complete package. Again, lifetime access to the members area. It's currently half off. It's only a thousand dollars. And I'll walk you through every step of the way until we get you the boat that's gonna work for you. Now this never expires. If you're not ready to buy a boat for a year or two, I say grab this now while it's on sale. That way we can do a whole bunch of foundational work over the next year or two before you're actually ready to buy. We can get you out on boats. We can look at some things. We can really, really get in depth and narrow down your search. We'll come up with offer prices. We'll go over the survey together, reduction in our prices, sea trials, all kinds of stuff. That's where you want the 24 seven consulting package. If you're really, really serious about getting on the water. Also something that helps is my spreadsheet. Now, you get my number one best-selling sailing book as well as my spreadsheet for only ten dollars so i published a sailing book on how to buy a used sailboat a couple years ago it was the number one best-selling sailing book out there at the time so you also get that it's only ten dollars so over my web suit site fantastic place to go um i've got a little bit of apparel up here stuff like that but again what we're really doing here is we just want to get you a boat that's going to work for you so head on our website grab a consulting package let's get you over in the members area let's get started